Today on Tactical Tuesday, I'm going to tell you a story over about seven or eight hands. Uh, the story of how I was playing online poker recently and stumbled across a volatile whale who was very volatile. <laughs> I, I know that's a little redundant, but very, very, very volatile. Um, and I know that this is a pain point for a lot of poker players when they stumble across a player who's, you know, putting all the money in very, very regularly, very, very often. Um, there's a lot of frustration that's felt when you're facing such an opponent. Um, and so today, just wanted to dive into this, this story, this example of playing against a super volatile white belt, how I responded, and... That's all I have for the setup for today's show. John, welcome nice. to Tactical Good Tuesday. To you. Good to see you back in the the online six max streets. Looks like you found a a good game for one of your first sessions. That's always good. Yeah, it, it was a it was a good game. You know, it's I'm excited to be playing a little bit more poker. I know that over the long run, I'll probably be playing a lot more than I have been the last year and a half or so. But you know, managing wolves and growing the business. Full-time gig. It's more than a full-time gig. It's tough to find time to sit down. But when I do sit down and things like this happen, I think, oh, wow, why did why, why did I ever start a CFP? Why why did <laughs> why did I ever start a business in the first place? You know, who's the whale? I can't. I'm trying to look at this table and decide who who I'm going to guess the whale is. So, spoiler alert: the YouTube viewer can see that I have a queen five of different suits. This hand I do not play. This is a hand that I observed. The whale is in the big blind. So we have a low jack open to 30. I fold small blind calls and the big blind calls. The flop is six, seven, nine. Is the small blind a reg? Is he- I don't think so. Flatting, okay. I, wow, uh, this is a great game, okay. I don't think so. I can't remember actually. So we'll know when I pull the whole cards up what what to think, but right. I, I don't think so. Um so six, seven, nine rainbow, the whale donks pot. So they bet ninety into the preflop razor, preflop razor calls, the small blind folds, the turn is at three, there's two sixty two in the pot. Uh the white belt has seven thirty seven behind, so a jet and <laughs> shoves the jet right in the middle. Um, jam 737. And original villain folds. In this spot, the whale donked the flop with bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. 3x jam the turn um, with a6 of spades. Flop was 679, turn 3. The preflop razor folded a7. And... King three for the small blind. So I still don't really know. That's, I don't know, to be honest. Um, Cause I'm, I'm not going to lie. There were some spots in this session where I did call a min raise with a hand like 10, four off, for instance, because I just couldn't, I had to, I had to get in there just in case. Uh, so that's hand number one. Now, hand number two to kind of set up this volatile whale, low jack opens to two big blinds. I fold Everybody folds the small blind. Um, the white belt whale calls. Flop is jack seven deuce. There's 50 in the pot. Villain has 531 behind. And they jam. <laughs> they 10x rip the flop for 531. The low jack makes the call. Turn five, river five. Whale. Flop top pair, 10x ripped, and low jack calls with kings. And now we're going to have the first hand where I VPIP um, in this whaley breakdown episode of Tactical Tuesday. So I have ace queen, and I've been waiting and waiting for something, you know, to flop top pair, to flop some kind of draw, to flop some kind of good hand. And yeah, ha haven't really done anything to this point. Um, I raise the three big blinds, the button calls, small blind folds, and the whale calls out of the big blind. The flop is jack 10-3. There's 95 in the middle. 
our villain has 900. I have a gut shot with overcards, and I'm thinking like, oh yeah, I, I have a draw. I have some equity, and we face another oh, 10, 10x rip. No. Yeah. So well, this is the frustrating stuff you were alluding to, I guess, at the beginning of the the beginning of the episode. Sometimes you just don't get to realize your equity versus these guys. Yep. You just, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So I fold my ace queen um, and the whale. What do they jam with? Top pair again. And by the way, the, the only hand that's going to showdown at this point was the jack seven jam into kings. Because when they bet pot on the flop and pot on the turn and everybody folds, nobody knows. You know, I, I don't know that the whale's doing it with bottom pair. I don't know um, exactly what hands uh villain is like potting here or 10x jamming on, on the flop unless it goes to showdown so you know you have an idea based on the frequency that you face such jams that some shenanigans are going on but you don't really know like exactly the caliber of of hands in, in which villain is is doing this and starting to get suspicious though very very suspicious yes and all, all you know we're going to go through seven hands and this is going to be the last hand um, before the break. And there's, there's some actual action here to discuss, but yeah, all of these hands went down over the course of like a hundred hands. So it, it happened very quickly. <laughs> there was a lot of action um, over those hands. So I opened a three big blinds with ace tray of spades from hijack our friend in the small blind flats and the big blind flats as well one thing that i'm noticing and i can't believe that i'm the one to tell you this i think everyone's just sizing way too small preflop yourself included and i think like the guy min opening kings for example is just like a i mean that's just I'm, i have no qualms of saying that's just a straight up mistake with this player in the blinds let me tell um, you why you're wrong <laughs> okay. so let, let me stop you there when villains 10 xing most boards and potting and just putting all their money in it, it isn't super i don't think you stand to gain a ton by just sizing up to like five big blinds or eight big blinds pre when like they're just going to put all the money in regardless of the pot size post flop the okay. size of the pot post flop honestly doesn't even really matter at this point like whether you open two, so big this guy like or never three, like check folds the flop. They do check. They did check fold, um, and they bet like one big blind some. But in general, like they're putting money in the pot, and generally it's like pot size bets everywhere. So, okay. Okay. yeah, I know I know what you're saying, and it did cross my mind in game. But then I I had that second thought of like it doesn't really matter. Like, just they're they're just putting all the money in regardless of the pot size. So, getting more money in, you know. All right. All right. It's one of those like just extreme type situations I felt. So ace king seven with one spade as the flop. I have ace tray. Villain leads half pot here, not their patented 10x. And the big blind raises. <laughs> so this is kind of decision point number one where the whale leads half, so 45 into 90. The big blind raises to 140, and I have top pair with a backdoor flush draw. <laughs> Any reads on half pot for this guy? So we, I think we, at least one thing that I can see from like the first three hands is that pot seems to be pot pair. Well, except when it was third pair with the A6. Okay, yeah, the A6, that was the one. Yeah. I, I mean, don't have a read on half pot. I don't know. I would. My suspicion was would be that it's a little weaker than pot, but uh -huh. I, I don't. I don't really know, um, honestly. Okay, I guess I would just call here. We're still getting like two to one on the flop, given that the raise is really really small. We have top pair backward flush draw. Yeah, I mean, can't it, think of. Can't think of good reasons for the other two options, which are fold and raise. Fold probably seems a little bit just too tight given the price that we're getting, given that, you know, the profile of the, the whale and the small blind 
not really sure what to make of the big blinds raised or what their range is going to be here. Wouldn't be shocked for it to be, you know, a lot of hands that are better than ace three. But like I said, I think we're just getting a good price and position with the back enough flush draw. And... Yeah, I agree. And we're also uncapped too. And, and the big blind is definitely capped. Like they yeah. just don't really have aces or kings or ace king. They can have a seven. They can have a set of sevens. Um, if they're, you know, blessed with a seven or a set of sevens, then very then good for them. But I thought the turn would play pretty straightforward if I flatted the flop. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the path that I chose was to flat the flop. Difficult for me to fold, just fold top pair in this situation because, you know, the big blind could be ISOing a king even um, and, and shutting out my equity. So, yeah, I thought that chance that I'm beating the big blind. Um, so I call and the whale calls too. So now there's five, 10 in the pot and the turn is a Jack of hearts. So five, 10 in the pot. I've got close to 1600 whale has 750, and the reg has both of us covered small blind checks, big blind checks. And now it's on us. Mm, interesting okay so we think that the big blind is very likely to play just very honestly i guess on this turn once you flatten position i think that's that's an accurate read and i think yeah like you said that's that's definitely another argument for flatting the flop um i guess what i would do here is check really hoping that the whale is just going to jam the river at a high frequency with stuff and hope the big blind folds and i just get to pick off whatever the whale decides to do. Yeah. yeah, that was my plan as well. In hindsight, I think betting the turn is like reasonable though. It's not crazy to, to just go ahead and bet the turn. Um, like a third, I think. Planning on checking back the river a lot. Yeah, mostly just checking back the river. Um, that would I... be my plan most of the time versus maybe even a normal fish in this situation. I'm just worried that like we do that and we miss out on like the 740 six dollars a lot on the river that he might just put it in with like seven eight or lean jack or just you know whatever whatever this guy has and so like yeah i think versus a normal player i i would that would be my plan here would be to bet rivers or sorry bet turn small do a lot of checking back on the river but versus this guy who i think is just gonna put in the 746 really really high frequency on the river i I, i'm gonna give him a chance to do that and try to figure it out on the river hope the hope the big blind folds yeah, give the player that's amped and ready to put all their chips in the middle a chance to put all their chips in the middle and kind of mm-hmm. see how the big blind responds. Because even if the big blind has a better hand than me, it's actually quite difficult for them to respond appropriately facing the jam because yeah. they don't know what I'm going to do behind them. And actually, my cold calling of their flop raise should be pretty terrifying from their perspective. Um, so creates a lot of pressure. Like they, they get squeezed on the river very often, which I think is like, uh, you know, another benefit to where, you know, we, the, the big blind could actually fold the best hand anyway, based on, um, the big blinds river jam, if they were to do it. Yeah. 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 It'd be really sweet if the small blind jam is a river and the big blind folds like ACE five or ACE nine or something yeah. like that somehow like that. Yeah. That would be amazing. I didn't even think about that. So checks through. The river is a three. So um, we river two pair on ace, king, jack, seven, three. 746, 90. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the whale bets $10. So, you know, they, they only 10x rip or, you know, bet one fiftieth of the pot. There, there's, you know, the, the in-betweens are much more rare. So they bet $10 on the river. And the big blind raises to 220. Now it's our action again. Maybe raising a worse hand for value. Sure. What hands would you expect to see? I don't know. King Jack? Ugh. 
King Jack checking the turn. Yeah, I guess that's not that crazy. Ace ten, like maybe most aces. Yeah, King three. Okay, yeah. I think there's enough in there. You're you're call. deciding like to call with two pair on the river. I mean, I think it's a I think it's a pretty slam dunk call. Yeah. Personally, I was just trying to make sure if there isn't a reason to raise. Can't think of a reason to raise. I think this is just yeah. yeah it's just too tough to get called by. I want to raise, hands. but yeah, me too. <laughs> it seems like man, can I make it like I just you know make it min and then get try to get called by King Jack and yeah. King Three and maybe even Ace Ten some of the time. Mm -hmm. I opted to just call with my two pair. Yeah, that's what uh, I would do too. Yeah, and, I mean the the downside too of like raising is that like maybe you can get. Oh, a two ten yeah. call from from the whale, right? Mm. So like you you yeah, can get yeah, that yeah. extra value just from their overcall on the river. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so yeah, I called whale folded, and I did in fact suck out on the ace nine off. Um, so one of one k pot, and what did the whale have? They had the seven four off. So half pot equaled bottom pair. 10x pot equals top pair. Um, unless he has a six. <laughs> yeah. Nine, yeah, unless seven, they have a six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot, lot of uh, loose wiring here um, from the villain. A lot of random button clicking. And uh, so now we're going to take a break. And after the break, we're going to look at some hands where lots more money goes in the pot um, than these. Just wanted to set up villain in this first half. So stick around for more volatile whale shenanigans. The CPG Wolves. I'm more organized. I'm more productive. I eat better. I sleep better. I exercise consistently because I just live a more structured life due to this program. Having this much poker brain power in one place is a recipe for great things. My favorite aspect of being a wolf is the sense of community, having that network to bounce ideas off and learn from each other. Poker is a brutal game. <laughs> so yeah, if you're committed to poker, joining CPG Wolves will be the best decision that you can make. The data doesn't lie. We know things that other people don't know. I like it that way. I hate that you're advertising. I hope nobody else ever joins. <laughs> so yeah, I like it. Go to wolftryouts.com to apply. All right. Welcome back from the break. Since I feel like I monopolized the, the discussion in part one. John, you want to break down the action here for me versus my Whaley friend? Sure. So King Seven of Clubs, assume you're going to be, oh, you face an open. Whale's in the big wine? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay can definitely expand your flatting range and position and get in there with lots of stuff. That's what we were assuming the small blind might be doing in the first hand when we saw him flat with the king three of spades is that they're just flatting a lot to try to get in there with the whale. And I think that's that's yep. good. Can't win the lottery if you don't buy any tickets. Oh, wow. You did I win think, the lottery. I think we may have just won the lottery. <laughs> uh, the flop is seven, seven, six with two spades. Ah, oh, what a dream. Oh, it's too good. It's too much. Yeah, so the, the whale donks pot. Reg folds. Only one thing to do, yeah? I've not seen this guy donk with nothing yet. So yeah, to me, you... raise does feel like it's on the table. Yeah, uh, but like the, the problem with that is we have the benefit of looking at their whole cards after yeah, the fact yeah. and like sure, I, sure. in game, you don't know what, what they're yeah, doing yeah. every time. Right. Yeah. Cause All right. most of those hands didn't go to showdown. Call. Yeah. We called you. you this is going to be a very fortuitous turn card, by the way, just. Uh, so the turn is the king of spades. So we make a boat and the flush completes. Um, 
remember what I said about, you know, just being patient and the size of the pot doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, this, this is where all of that kind of pays off. Uh, villain has 910 left and they just rip it in. Um, what do you think, John? Call with our boat? Let me think about this one. Yeah, this is, this is a tough uh, one. Huh? I think I, okay, yeah, there's only one combo of better hands. Yeah, I think I called in like point one second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here's you're about to see the really sad part about this. They had like that, seven six or something. <laughs> I get sixes. Oh my god! <laughs> they just turned the nut flush. Every red at the table hates you right now. <laughs> just wants to. Yeah. End your life. But... I, I'm trying to get like top pair, top kicker so that I can like stack this guy and I end up with a boat <laughs> and they end up with a nut flush in a spot where like, you know, I, I would have stacked anybody. Like it, it, this, oh, this villain could have been anybody that I stacked yeah. here. Um, yeah. Not even, not even special, but yeah, I'll take it. Question. I want to just go back real quick to the opening size conversation that we were having. If the MP, if player four open to 40 or 50 big blinds, would you be flatting king seven suited in position? Yeah. Oh, you would? Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering if there's any merit to like opening larger, not so much to make the pot bigger versus the whale, but to do a better job of isoing the whale pre flop. I mean, it may work. Like some villains may have an internal threshold as to how much they're willing to invest. Um, I don't know what that threshold is but it's definitely not 40 okay. when okay. villain is just you know 10x 10x ripping yeah. the flop like whale is just so bad that yeah you know, 18 dollars is not going to move the needle as, as to like my call and fold um gotcha, gotcha. hands maybe okay. like a hundred a <laughs> hundred okay <laughs> I, yeah, i'm gonna have to fold my king seven you know but you also risk like we don't know that villain in the big blind, we'll just call 70 with like seven, four off either. Right. Like they could that's true. just, fold. that's true. Like, yeah. Um, which is kind of disastrous, right. We're like, Oh, I'm sizing up with like my strong hand and they end up folding like seven, four off instead of like flopping middle pair and 10 X jamming when you have an over pair, like you, you're actually like <laughs> making it, you're giving yourself less opportunity to stack the villain. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we get them there. Um, you can break down this hand. We got this one and then one more. The last one is, yeah, we're going to go out with a bang. 450 in the villain stack. He starts out with limp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're in the big blind. Wow, the small blind folds. Who is, who is this guy? Just, I don't know. There's... It's so rich. He doesn't even need to take the spot. Okay. Some, some Thanks, joker. I guess. Some we're, joker. Yeah, we go heads up versus the will. Um, ooh. Thought there was going to be a <clears throat> decision here as to whether to, to raise even a six offsuit or not for value preflop. Um, I yeah. assume you would have a better idea of that than I would because I don't even know what this guy's limping or opening. I've only seen him call. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't mind raising again. Like, let let's him get to the swap flop. an ace or a six and just have them like 40x, <laughs> okay, okay. 40x jam. You know, I don't, okay. I don't see the need. Hey, dude, I'm learning the game now. I'm seeing the I'm like, how to play this game. <laughs> yeah, tw like $25 in the pot. That's just an illusion. It, it, that, that, doesn't, <laughs> that, that doesn't actually matter to this guy. Um, So they bet 10 on the flop. So one big blind. We have ace All high. Right. Flop I is 10, 8, 4. We've got two backdoor straight draws. Not anymore, but the board pairs. That's good for us when we have an ace. Check, check. That's good, too. Oh, board double pairs. Ooh. Just easy easy call. They, I think so you I'm... just got a call, right? Because like we've seen this guy just jam the turn with second pair and... Yeah. Stuff like that. And so it seems like there's already a lot of removal to his paired hands once he checks the turn. Um, For the podcast listener, Villain Jam 10x on the river. There's 45, Villain Jam 433. Yeah. Final board is 8, 4, 10, 4, 10. So we have ace high on a double paired board after the turn goes check, check. Yeah. I think we just call and I don't know what we lose to if we lose here. Like, I assume he would jam an 8 or bet an eight on the turn, probably just bet the flop bigger with an eight. Definitely all those things are true about a 10. Can't imagine him checking a four on the turn if he did bet it on the flop. So yeah, I agree. Trap me. 
trap 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 me you trap me and the good <laughs> news is like it's probably going to be all in in the next couple of hands anyway so you know we have a chance to to get it back um yeah. so yeah I, I did end up calling for all the reasons that you said i i thought like you know they're top pair type hands generally just betting pot on the turn i hadn't really seen them not do that um so I called. I feel like this is where you call. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, you had a really good. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I feel like this is a spot where I call and I get shown like pocket fives. You know what I'm mm. like? Okay. <laughs> That's sorry. They did not oh, have okay. pocket fives. They had a 10, actually. They had a top boat. Um, and this is another part of, of dealing with these types of players, right? Just because they're putting all the money in all the time doesn't mean that they're you know, not allowed to make big hands. They're not allowed to have pocket aces. They're not allowed to flop sets. They're going to flop sets and have aces at the same frequency as everybody else. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it feels way worse when they do because <laughs> they're putting the money in so often. Um, Dude, he gave us he, he gave us the full bamboozle. The, the yeah. one big blind on the flop, check back on the turn with top pair second kicker. Like, whoo, I did not see this coming. I didn't see it coming either. That's why... That's why the nine hundred dollar <laughs> pot got shipped in his direction, um, and so now we're gonna make it to the the grand finale hand here versus this villain. This is almost directly after I doubled him up to nine hundred. Yeah, um, we can see his stack. Yeah. Yeah. So final hand, you can break down the action, John. All right, we got another limp. Wow. Folds around to us. Nice. We get to ISO the jack five of hearts on the button. Definitely doing that. Oh, man. And we get it heads up. All right. This is a good start. Yeah. Calls. So we're going to a flop with $95 in the middle. 733. Three. Not the word. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was going to talk about C betting, but I forgot who we're playing against. Yeah. C betting um, opportunities were hard to come by. So villain donks pot on Trey Trey seven rainbow. I have Jack five of hearts. Feels like this might just be the close to the stone bottom of my calling range or this type of hand. I mean, calling felt especially bad when, you know, the, the two or three X rip, come so frequently on the river mm. um so you, you don't get to realize your equity all that often okay i don't and i also was unaware that like even though a few hands had gone to showdown they were betting pot so frequently that it, it wasn't obvious to me that they necessarily had to have something to bet pot and trade trade seven rainbow is about as dry as it can possibly get so I would also read into the, the the hand that happened right before this, right? And I'd be like, oh, he bet one big blind on the flop with top pair second kicker. He's been he's been betting pot a whole lot. Pot probably is like gonna be the weaker size, I guess. If I've seen him bet small once with a strong hand, he doesn't bet small very often because you don't make strong hands all that often, and he uses pot a lot because you have air a lot. So okay, I can I can talk myself into this race. Yeah, definitely. What size do you think? <sighs> A lick it. Yeah, that one thing a, that I, yeah. yeah, one thing that I want to make sure is that like when I do get bet three bet jammed on, that I'm not, you know, I'm not missing, I'm not losing extra big blinds that I don't have to. At the end of the day, we're, you know, this is a whale who's donking pot. Like the range that we're trying to fold out on the flop is mostly just going to be air. We don't expect this guy to ever fold a seven. Probably doesn't even fold like a hand like pocket fours or fives if he does decide to donk pot with sure. with those types of hands. So really, at the end of the day, we're just targeting clean high plus here when we have jack five of hearts yeah and in hindsight i'm actually a little afraid of queen high king high a side just calling the click um when i really think about it because like that that actually is going to manifest on the turn with my turn decision um so yeah, you can do things on the turn yeah so i i maybe click it plus one big blind or something yeah, um, yeah. A, a little bit more than click but i make it 200 they they potted Essentially 95, and I made it 202. Um, they call. The turn is the six of diamonds, so we we have hope. We have we have a gut shot. We turn some equity. There's 500 in the pot. Villain checks. They've got 641 behind. Action is on us. Mm. 
now I don't want to get jammed on. Okay, so I think one of the things that I was thinking about, the first thing that we said on the flop is like we're trying to fold out queen eye, king eye, ace eye. A um, little worried that, you know, given the price that those hands might be getting, maybe hands like king queen or, you know, something like that just calls the calls the flop raise. They're getting a good price, have two overs to make top pair, all that stuff. Um, I think we can target that range on the turn with a small bet. So that's what I was thinking about on the flop when you said you were worried that those hands might not might not fold. I think that those hands, you know, if they don't fold the flop, will very likely fold the turn facing small. So I think like that's an option if you want to target that range. The downside to that is that now we've just turned some real equity in the form of a gut shot. And you know, even though it's not even though it's not an incredible amount of equity, having potentially three over cards plus four nut straight outs is um this you know it's something it's it's equity that we don't want to, it's equity that we don't want to we not did, realize it's equity that we didn't have on the flop right so yeah yeah it, so it, we have a little bit of hope now some competing incentives here betting to fold out those hands and risking putting our equity at risk um i'm going to say bet and target those hands the equity that we're putting at risk isn't I don't know. It's not so attractive that bet folding would be the end of the world to me. Um, six of hearts would be a horse of a different color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six yeah. of six of like diamonds. So trade, trade, six, seven, gut shot. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw the risk, but I could live with them jamming and me just having to fold my my dry gut shot on the turn. I, I you know, it, it sucks. It's not it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world either. Yeah. Um, so now the it, question is, what size folds out ace high on the turn? <laughs> I didn't know, but I did think that, you know, when villain bets pod and then calls, right, they're they're kind of polarized to, like, pairs and not pairs. Um, so they have some air over cards that we talked about, like ace high that we discussed, and as well as, like, 7x, you know, or maybe, like, mm -hmm. pocket fives or pocket fours. I, against such a villain that's so wide, I don't really love trying to make them fold out the pairs to be honest with you, I think folding out the pairs is just very, very difficult for this. <laughs> yeah, profile. I would not try to make this guy fold a pair either. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm on so, board with that. So I landed on 10% um, pawn on the turn. So 10%, again, targeting their like ace high, king high, queen high with the plan of, you know, probably hitting the river with another 10%. Um, just giving myself a chance to fold out all of their high card type hands and lose the minimum when they do have a pair that I don't think they're going to fold. Um, nice. So that was kind of how I structured my strategy on the turn. It was just really, really small with a plan of going really, really small on the river as well, probably like $60. Um, and realizing like, you know, it's a good price for me to bluff. They don't have to fold that often for this bet to make money. And I think it's very difficult for them to defend at the appropriate frequency given the very, very tiny bet. They probably need to start calling with some you know, most all of their ace high in their range or all of their ace high in their range as, as well as maybe some like king high. Um, so that was what I landed on. Um, so I go 10th pot. Villain calls. Oh, the river is a realization. four. <laughs> the river is a four. I, I should feel ashamed of myself for this, this <laughs> run out, to be honest. Um, the final board is Trey Trey seven. That was a flop. The turn is a six and the river is a four. I have jack five, so I have a straight magically. Um, so to end this, you know, the exciting conclusion of this episode is going to be that <laughs> now we get now we get the the donk on the river. It looks to be like you know seventy five percent pot um, right in the middle. They bet four forty five, leaving themselves with one forty six, and against such a villain, unlike last week when there was a real decision as to whether or not you want to jam and can get called by 50% worse hands against this opponent, I was pretty confident that I could get called by 50% worse hands if I jammed. <laughs> Especially when he doesn't jam himself. Yeah. Yeah. So I jammed and villain snapped it and they flopped an overpair. They had pocket eights. Um, <laughs> so we got, we got the... The good run out against the villain. Um, we coolered the villain. So we got the money, but not necessarily the way that I expected to get the money, which was to, you know, flop top pair or, and flop an over pair and have them dust off their whole stack. 
Yeah, this man. So this is this whale limped eight. Didn't bet three bet jam the flop after getting raised. Didn't check jam the turn after you know he's just. I'm yeah. glad I wasn't playing against him because I was, I would have I would have guessed wrong on like every single position point or, or range analysis spot versus this guy. Waited until the river forced your eight to yeah, yeah to bet seventy five yeah. percent pot. Um, when whenever things got the darkest, the whale saw the light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, this is gonna do it for. Did he leave after this hand? Did, did this break the game? It did. It it it, it broke. It, it broke our <laughs> poor poor friend's spirit. He they left. Yeah. Um, you know we, and curtains closed. Um, but it was a good show. It was a good show. Got anything? Dude, I bet the other regs they were they were getting so excited. They saw him double up. You call the river with ace high, and they're like, "Nice, he's getting gaining some momentum." Then they see him like jam the river on a four liner, basically, and they're like, "Nice, like the button's probably gonna have to fold a decent amount on this river." And instead, they just it's just a nightmare where the, the game is about to break. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I think in normal circumstances versus such a villain, you don't need straights and boats to stack them. Um, you just need like an overpair, right? You just need to beat like their top pair and that's that's good enough to stack them in general um yeah this yeah. was you know me just running a little hot um <laughs> getting getting this incredible run out as well as you know the gin card in the ace five of spades hands although i do think that even if the turn was not the king of spades the villain may have overbet ripped the turn um with their their nut flush draw anyway so didn't necessarily need the cooler but the cooler was nice. It <laughs> gave them zero percent equity, so pretty pretty nice. Cool. Got, got anything left to add for a close oh, down? That's it. Good episode. Always always like to see these volatile whale sessions. They're definitely the most exciting. I think like you know most of poker, most of the poker that that you know you and I play, especially I think when you get to one case, is a lot of reg battles a lot of you know oh this is the standard size here this is the standard size there and then when you get a, a player type like this or when you get the occasional game like this and everything just gets flipped on his head i think these are the definitely become like the most exciting sessions yeah all bets are off you know it's a, it's yeah. a wild 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 west and yeah. that's that's my favorite environment in poker playing in the wild wild west so that's going to do it for today's episode of tactical tuesday that's all i got see you next week see you next week Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.